I just received my Freaks from Sayos, French company Shape Your Own Sound. The Freaks are mouthpieces that were made that were, uh, either had a mistake in the how it felt or maybe the baffle was uneven, something like that, something that was imperfect, but they take it out of production. And they were giving away, oh, not giving away, but uh, giving away for a reduced price during uh, Halloween. So I got uh, these three mouse, three mouthpieces for alto saxophone for only 90 euros. Usually um, every signature mouthpiece will cost you 199 euros. If you want a custom made mouthpiece, it costs you 299. But I'm pretty excited about how they sound because even though there's uh, small flaws in them, they are 100%. So, uh, hi YouTubers, hi Instagrammers. Um, so, um, today I'm going to be um, doing my first review, uh, my uh, product review uh, video. As I said, I uh, got some um, mouthpieces here from um, Sios, you know, a company in France called Shape Your Own Sound, Sios. And, um, these mouthpieces were part of what they um, sales um, campaign called uh, Freaks uh, at the uh, like I said in Halloween, and uh, which they were actually mouthpieces that were um, have some imperfections on them while they were making them. Like either the baffle was uneven or something about the feel wasn't uh, wasn't smooth on the outside of the mouthpiece, and so they take it out of the production because they only want to send out a mouthpiece that's perfect, you know, and that's totally understandable. But of course, it, you know, they have materials left over. And uh, so it was a way to try to get rid of some mouthpieces, you know. And as I mentioned in just before the, in the beginning of this video, uh, as, I, as I first got these mouthpieces, I got three of them, you know, for alto saxophone, three of them for 90 euros. So 90 euros. Uh, usually, uh, every single mouthpiece, when you buy a signature model, will cost you 199 euros. If you want a custom-made mouthpiece, um, that will run you 299 euros. Um, <clears throat> so in any case, so I'm pretty anxious about trying them out. What I'll be using, I'll be using my Selmer Mark VI um, alto saxophone. Uh, I also want to say um, I have two necks on this, and because um, uh, basically I have the original neck here, you know, with the um, blue S in here, and I have another egg, uh, neck here that was uh, manufactured during the 70s. And uh, see, so this model I have was built uh, around the beginning of 1957, and like I said, this um, uh, this neck was manufactured around 19 in the 1970s uh, why do I have two well basically long story short um, I had a problem with first with this neck with the original neck with the intonation from high A upwards and then got an, uh, an, another neck to to to, um, to correct that situation but now I had a repairman who actually was able to work on the original neck to also get it in tune but now I have totally uh, two two completely different sounds. One, I have a very classic sound on the original neck and a little bit more modern uh, jazz, you know, open, biting uh, sound on the, on the newer neck. So, yeah, cool. It's like almost having like two horns in one. But anyway, um, the original, the mouthpiece I usually play is a Van Doren um, V16. Uh, with a uh, small chamber, this is an uh, A9. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's called yeah. I think it's I think it's called A9. Yeah, basically. So it's uh, it's comparable to about an uh, an eight or a nine opening um, on uh, on other alto saxophone mouthpieces. I know that's pretty large, but for some reason uh, I like that, and it doesn't sound that open for me. Uh, I'm going to be using um, uh, Van Doren M. MO ligature, thing, uh, MO ligature, plus Sayos also sent me their ligature that goes with the mouthpiece, so I'm going to be trying them both. And um, in any case, uh, I'm playing also uh, right now on Van Doren V21 reed, uh, three and a half strength. 
I usually play also V16 reads, but at the moment I don't have a read uh, from the V16 broken in, and I really don't feel like uh, going through through, through, through that at the moment. So um, I'm just going to dive right in. I'm first going to deal with this blue one. Uh, I have to say they just uh, sent the mouthpiece what they have, just a set of three. I have no idea uh what the tip opening is on these on these mouthpieces i could only look through them to get an idea of what maybe if it's a large chamber medium chamber or small chamber so i'm um, doing a little bit of guesswork uh, and uh, made a couple of you know notes for myself on um making the differences between mouthpieces but in any case let's first jump into um the blue one and i'm going to be using the original Sios ligature mm -hmm. and check out how that sounds so I tried these mouthpieces a little bit before but now I have to really remind myself um, what was which <laughs> you know some things I liked about each one some things I wasn't too sure but it had usually to do with the tip opening stuff like that so, <laughs> Now, um, this is a from um, this is something pretty good. This is also one of the things they advertise with these mouthpieces about them um, being more in tune uh, than maybe other mouthpieces, and also the uh, altissimo response is very good. Um, uh, and uh, so up to a point that I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, so I'm, I'm going to play up the high E flat. I mean, so there, you know, of course, that have to do with the mouth, uh, do with the the reed as well. Let me just try the same mouthpiece with my Van Doren ligature. You know, uh, see if it fares any better. Uh, let's try try this now. Now, in any case, um, with the Van Doren literature, the mouthpiece speaks a little bit more openly. I mean, I don't know if you hear it, but I, my uh, impression as I'm playing it, I, I don't sound uh, as muffled as before. Uh, so I'd say um, this seems to be from the tip opening, I'm just taking a guess somewhere around... Uh, what you would call maybe a six, six star, maybe almost seven. Um, that, that again, I'm not too sure. Um, I'm going to try it now with the um, other neck, with my more modern neck from the uh, Mark Six. Again, with the Van Doren uh, ligature, I'm using the same reed, same mouthpiece, and see what type of results. I get here. Yeah. I mean, so here, uh, again, a little bit more open. Yeah. There I'm getting a little bit brighter sound, something I'm 
uh, you soup, but still with a dark darkness. I mean, I don't play with a really bright sound myself, but I like to have a little bit of an edge, uh, some darkness on it, but not too much. Uh, it almost sounds like I have a sock in my bell or anything like that. I don't particularly like that, and I don't know anybody else who does. But anyway, um, my impression from this um, from this CEO's uh, mouthpiece, to this one, like I like I said, um, I imagine it to be somewhere around a uh, six star seven tip opening. The chamber uh, seems to be quite large. Yeah, I don't really see any other walls uh, impeding going through it. So I imagine this is a large chamber, but like I said, I'm only speculating. What was the imperfection on this mouthpiece? The imperfection on this mouthpiece I see was um, just uh, on the front here in the vamp. It almost looks as though uh, somebody had been playing on it and maybe bit off something. No, but it's not really indented. It's just for some reason. It just uh, just as one area looks a little bit worn. Uh, and plus here on the table, it's also not, uh, not amazingly even. Um, as far as the table going into the mouthpiece, it's, it goes smoothly down, but there is this a little um, indenting uh, in it, but I imagine that's on purpose, just in order to get more projection out of the mouthpiece. I mean, so um, that's with, uh, with the blue one. So the next one I'm going to try is the red one. So now going back, to my original neck, the, the original neck with the mouthpiece, I mean with the, with the saxophone. I'm going to go with the red mouthpiece here. I also noticed uh, too with the red when I made some notes for myself, I noticed that here the whales on this mouthpiece were thicker than maybe on the blue one. But we'll see. I'm going to first try it out. Again, using the Sios ligature, the, the ligature that came with it, and um, we'll see here how that sounds. Now here it sounds like I'm a little bit flat, or the intonation is um, totally down. I'm thinking, I think. I, the notes I put on myself for myself on this one is that the red one, yeah, exactly. The the butt here at the end of the mouth, where it comes in t t uh, attached to the neck, is a little bit longer as the other mouthpieces. You know, um, how much of effect that really has on it, uh, I, I, I don't know, but I, I guess you know, right at the moment, it's just I noticed. I had the internet, uh, the intonation was a little bit too deep, maybe that, but that's only because I just didn't push the mouthpiece in far enough. Mm -hmm. Let me get this repositioning. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of these type of ligatures where you just slip on it with just a ring. Uh, I just feel that there's too little control over it. And, um, and I believe on one of these mouthpieces, um, this type of ring ligature sits pretty far up or uh, a little bit too close to the shoulder for my taste. And so that um, that's why, you know, if I would play one of these mouthpieces all the time, uh, I probably wouldn't use this ligature. Yeah. But that's, again, my opinion. <laughs> Now here I have um yeah I have, I have projection I have a different sound here but still in the middle range I still feel it's kind of like um kind of still kind of stuffy you know and the extreme ranges uh, you know the lower range is loud enough the the higher range is quite brilliant and yeah along with the altissimo. In the middle of the horn, I'm not really. I'm not the most satisfied with the sound there. 
but um, that's okay. You know, that's okay. We're just trying stuff out. Um, as let's see, just try with the other with my um, Bandoran ligature. I like to uh, experiment with that one. See how it's gonna sound there. Yeah. 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 I mean, so here again, I like the sound better with the Van Doren ligature. I still get more openness uh, in that mouth uh, with the mouthpiece and the reed. <clears throat> with a lighter ligature, one that doesn't really have so much contact with the reed and the mouthpiece simultaneously. I mean, there is contact here, but just because, um, you know, the ligature is not really wrapped around the mouthpiece, it seems to me uh, more open. Now, as far as the, open, the tip opening on this mouthpiece, uh, I again think, uh, again, we just uh, guess this is also a uh, pretty open one, also somewhere around uh, a seven opening. Um, I'm just like again, I, I'm just guessing a seven opening. Uh, I'm gonna try with the uh, newer neck, you know, and um, this chamber. The chamber, this looks like this could be a medium chamber mouthpiece, oh, looks a little bit smaller than the last one. But um, you know, then the blue one looks a little bit smaller, and just yeah, it looks a little bit thinner. Uh, and that's why I'm just going to guess at a medium chamber. Um, the table, as it goes into mouthpiece, is the same as the blue one. It looks like no different changes there. Um, uh, only thing I did notice with this red mouthpiece, yeah, exactly. Once I tried it before. After just playing a little bit, a bit of moisture seems to accumulate uh, on the table of the mouthpiece here, which gives me a suspicion that um, the, the whole table and the rails is not exactly flat. And so uh, moisture from my read from playing escapes, you know, uh, regardless of having the lig ligature on top, uh, on top of it, it seems to be that, you know, it's just not uh, totally airtight, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I can't suck the air out of the mouthpiece, and uh, so so somewhere on the mouthpiece, it, it just doesn't close well. It's totally playable mouthpiece, but again, um, something indicates to me that it's, this, this is not uh, totally closed, you know? <laughs> I mean, so, um, yeah, um, sounds good, but from the feeling and playing, I, I, I seem to have a bit of resistance in, uh, in there that I personally really uh, don't like to have when I'm playing. But um, in all in all, the mouthpiece is playable, and um, if you like that type of sound and if you get, you know, uh, a reed that you like and the, and the ligature that you really like playing with um, is definitely something that you know, one could work with. Again, with the original lig um, so Sayos ligature, uh, you notice right away it just doesn't. Oh, wow, wow, what was that? Try to play and then almost no sound came. I mean, so, um, yeah, so, um, in any case, like I mentioned before, it just seems that the, um, butt end of the mouthpiece, let me just put this down, the butt end of the mouthpiece by the red one is longer 
Then the blue one, I mean, if I may match them up, if I were to tip it, I could see like really close that the red one is quite longer. And um, if I put them on, I am once putting them on the table, I mean, the red one, uh, so anyway, it's a, it's a lot longer mouthpiece. Not necessarily that the facing here is longer, that it's not, they seem to be actually of equal length. And the chamber seems also to be of equal length. It's just this butt end of the, of the mouthpiece is, is longer. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not too sure uh, what type of effect that really has, other than maybe, you know, being able to have more tuning opportunities. Not too sure. Anyway, so now let's go to this pretty funky kind of like, I don't know, lavender uh, type of... Um, um, of mouth, lavender colored mouthpiece. So again, I'm going to put back on the original Mark VI uh, neck on it. And there, stick this one on. This, in any case, the butt is the exact same length as the blue one. Yeah. And I'm going to, need to use first the Sayas ligature uh, on it. Yeah. Uh, for people who like these type of ligatures, something like that, uh, you know, like I said, not not to knock it. It's just my personal uh, preference not to use something like this. But I'm willing to give everything everything a try. I mean, so. Um, I mean, so I like um, the free blowing under this mouthpiece as well. And um, again, um, there's a little bit of resistance there in the uh, in, in playing of it that I don't particularly favor, but it's okay. This one, this mouthpiece, for as far as the opening, like I said, they have no indicator on it anywhere to tell me um, uh, how large the opening is, so I'm just seeing a guess. This seems to be a little bit more closed. This gives me an impression there's somewhere between five and between five and a six. Five and a six opening. Um, maybe probably five five star if you're comparing it to some other mouthpieces. So, so five or five and a half, you know, type of opening. Uh, not bad, yeah, not bad. I think, but I like the re I like the response, yeah. Uh, so at the moment, let's again with the uh, Van Duren ligature. Try with my Van Duren ligature on it, yeah. <laughs> And um, I might just sense something there because I'm not even too sure if this mouthpiece is really. Now this one's also not really closed. It's um, it doesn't it doesn't close 100%. It's it's uh, so that means somewhere around here it's leaking. But uh, like I said before at the beginning of the video, none of these mouthpieces are uh, are are perfect. You know, none of these mouthpieces were perfect. They were. Um, uh, basically imperfections during um, uh, uh, during the manufacturing manufacturing process. I mean, they they make these mouthpieces uh, with a computer and a three D printer. You know, uh, the type of material. Um, I'm not too sure. I mean, it's, it feels like plastic, but I'm pretty sure it's something more than just that. Some type of uh, uh, so some type of synthetic plastic. I have to look on the website to really see it, uh, to check it out. I think well, that's at uh, Sio, so S Y O S dot I O, where you can find them. And um, yeah, so let me just continue here. So uh, let me put on my newer Mark VI uh, neck. Like I said, the sound here in the neck is different. I mean, so it is, as you can see, you know, saxophone sound, uh, there's so many things between mouthpiece and neck and, and your reed and your ligature. 
I mean, so um, I like the response on it. I like the way it it it, um, it handles also the lower register without ch uh, choking too much, you know, uh, which is um, um, plays it pretty nicely. Yeah, yeah. Hi, F. I that was an F, but uh, I used to be able to do that. But I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get again with the right mouthpiece and recombination. So, uh, intonation is really, really, um, I'd say, excellent uh, up there in the high, uh, up there in the artisanal register, and it's actually pretty easy to play, um, easier to control. You know, so uh, I'd say that's really a major uh, plus point. May, really a major plus point on this mouthpiece yeah so um yeah so with that i'd say sios um uh let's say you know they're um what can i say they're good mouthpieces they're really good mouthpieces and I, especially if you take the um opportunity to uh, get in touch with them there or you can go on the website you can actually call them to even discuss further um, if you plan on having a custom made mouthpieces then you could um, get something that's really specified for you and I think this is something that's uh, really great to, uh, to have in this day and age sure they're a bit pricey but that's with uh, anything that you have custom made if you have custom made shoes or a custom uh, made uh, suit you know it's gonna cost you some money so, but uh, I see in the long run for your career, um, it's uh, something that could uh, actually be worth financing. So anyway, I'd like to uh, thank you for us listening, for, for, for dropping by, listening to review. Please subscribe to my channel, comment, um, you know, uh, put a like, press that like button. And... Um, yeah, just let me know what you think, what you think you've heard, or, or what you think about these type of mouthpieces and so on. And again, thank you uh, to um, Sios. Uh, I mean, of course, I paid for them, you know. Uh, they didn't just send them to me, but uh, um, I just um, think, it, I think it's pretty nice that they're even doing this. And I got some wind in the, in the work. They also, right now, they only have uh, saxophone mouthpieces, you know, soprano, alto, Tenor, I think even baritone. I'm not too sure. I really have to take a look. But I understand that they're working on um, clarinet mouthpieces as well, which is something I'm also looking quite forward to. And uh, I would like to check them out for clarinet and also for bass clarinet. But anyway, thanks for dropping by. And again, uh, see you again at the next product review.